Well, if stationary electrons and electrons moving at constant speeds don't generate radiation, then let's consider an electron that is accelerating. Specifically, let's consider the following scenario. An electron is at rest until time t1. Then at time t1, the electron feels an outside force that causes it to accelerate quickly. And it's going to accelerate uh, quickly compared to the speed of light. So 70% c. And it's going to do that until time t2. And thereafter, the electron continues to move to the right at a constant speed equal to 70% of the speed of light. So here I'll say accelerates to 70% c and constant speed here, 70% c. And we're going to create a diagram of the electric fields emitted by this electron at time t3. So here, this is where we're going to create our image of the electric fields. We can use the electric field plots that we generated earlier to create the plot that we need here at time t3. First, the electron was at rest until time t1. And by the time that we take the image at time t3, these field lines will have moved away from the electron at a distance equal to, so here from the electron at the center to this, this distance would be the speed of light c times t3, since we have meters per second and seconds, so this will give us the distance. Then after the acceleration is completed at time t2, the electron starts to move to the right again at a constant speed equal to 70% of the speed of light. So that's shown here on the right side of the screen. We're looking at after it's accelerated and it's moving at a constant speed. So by the time we get to time t3, these field lines have also traveled away from the electron a distance uh, c t3 minus t2. And the fields uh, would look like the, the fields that we have on the right side of the screen. So now we just have to consider what happens during the acceleration. And we can imagine that the electric fields emitted by the electron during the acceleration will have to connect these two sets of fields, the one shown on the left and the one shown on the right. These are both taken at time t3. And so let's put these fields together, and then we'll connect the lines together. And this is what we end up with. In other words, the acceleration of the electron creates a disturbance in the electric field. You can see that here. And as time progresses past time 3, the electric field lines, and in including this disturbance, will continue to move outward at the speed of light, away from where they were emitted by the electron. And from Maxwell's equations, Faraday's and Ampere's laws, the time-changing electric field disturbance, which we circled here, generates a time-changing magnetic field, which in turn generates a time-changing electric field, and so forth, which generates wave propagation. So what this accelerating electron has done is that it's created an electromagnetic wave. So then if we consider an electron at rest that feels an outside force, causing it to accelerate to the right to a speed equal to 70% of the speed of light, and then cause it to decelerate to the left until it's at rest again, the fields a short time after all this occurs will look like this. Here's the disturbance from all this acceleration after it's propagated a bit away from the electron. And since we will want to generate a sinusoidally varying electromagnetic wave in order to heat up the tumor, we will want the electron, or group of electrons, 
to continuously accelerate and decelerate over and over again in order to create a propagating sinusoidal electromagnetic wave like the one you can see here. Just ignore this red dot. That's not important. All right, now we know what causes the radiation, so let's get back to our transmission line and see what we can do to help it radiate more effectively. Because of the sinusoidal source, the electrons in the two conductors are accelerating and decelerating, and, but the transmission line is not a great antenna because the currents in the top and the bottom conductors are flowing in opposite directions. So this causes the resulting electric field disturbances that radiate away from each of the conductors to largely oppose each other and cancel each other out. So then, is there something we can do to the conductors to help them radiate better? Maybe something at the end of the transmission line? More specifically, can we make a change to the transmission line, maybe a geometrical change, so that the currents in the two conductors flow in the same direction at the end of the transmission line so that they can reinforce each other?